USS Razorback served in the U.S. Navy from World War II right up to 1970. Uh, in 1970, she was decommissioned out of the U.S. Navy and transferred to the Turkish Navy. Uh, right after she was decommissioned out of the Turkish Navy, a group of sub-vets started working to bring her back to the U.S. The uh, biggest obstacle was uh, some treaty requirements and State Department requirements that she not be capable of operating as a military vessel, i.e. she wasn't able to submerge. She arrived in uh, North Little Rock in August 2004 and opened in May 05. Uh, but we're not just a submarine. Um, in addition to the submarine, we do have about a 2,500 square foot museum. Uh, with a number of artifacts on submarine history, uh, of course the history of Razorback herself. We do guided tours, uh, unlike a lot of historic vessels where you just go in and you're kind of at your own devices and if you don't know what something is, you know, you're just left to wonder. The tour, it begins uh, usually right outside the submarine so that you get kind of a, a good view of the sail and um, there's a couple of pictures out there we like to talk about that show her uh, her earlier configurations, her World War II configuration, and then after her guppy conversion. Um, and then you're going to go up the gangway and get on the deck, and we'll tell you a little more about kind of the superstructure of the submarine. We'll take you to the aft end of the boat, the stern, take you down into the after torpedo room, and uh, then you, we start moving forward through the boat, through eight watertight compartments. When you get in there, you're just surrounded by valves and switches and lights and levers and you really finally get a feel for how complex this piece of machinery is and, and a, a real appreciation for the people who had to learn how to work it. There is only seven eighths of an inch thick wall between you and, and feet and feet and feet of, of seawater. And it's really a, an eye-opening experience. Razorback's one of only two submarines in the world that have not been modified in any way. Uh, you're actually climbing up and down the ladders that the crew used when it was an active duty submarine. And that's just an authentic uh, experience that you can't get uh, anywhere else. A lot of museum vessels, because they don't have guided tours, they've had to put up a lot of plexiglass and there's a real hands-off feeling, you know, don't touch, uh, you know, and, uh, and we've tried to not do that. I mean, we actually have artifacts that you can pick up and handle, so, and we're trying to do more of those. Some of the outside exhibits right now, we have a uh, three-inch gun uh, that came off of a destroyer-type vessel in World War II. Um, and, uh, and, you know, kids can actually climb up on it and turn the hand wheels and things like that. And, uh, of course, it doesn't move. It doesn't go up and down or turn side to side. But, uh, but it's, a, it's, you know, it's something they can actually touch. We get a lot, a lot of veterans. Um, we keep a, a guest book um, specifically for Razorback veterans and for other submarine vets. Um, they get through uh, without a tour guide. They pretty much... They don't pay to come in. We, we assume they have sweat equity in the boat. Um, but it's, it's always a treat when they do because they always have these wonderful stories and, um, and great memories that they're willing to share with you. Um, I almost prefer it when they do come on the tours with us because they'll, they kind of almost take charge and start telling you, well, this was my bunk and, and this is what we did here and oh, this one time this happened here. And, and it's, it's really a unique experience. I was a missile technician on a Polaris and Poseidon submarine. Polaris at first, and then we went through the yards and converted to Poseidon. And uh, uh, I spent uh, eight patrols in a yard period on uh, James K. Polk, SSBN 645, Blue Crew. I uh, spent 11 months on a submarine like the Razorback, a little bit more modernized than the Razorback. Um, you first go on board them, you're what they call a non-qual puke, if you want to know the phrase. Uh, once you, to serve on submarines, you have about six to eight months to get what they call qualified. You wear these dolphins like a pilot wears wings. You have to learn a lot about the submarine. You have to pretty much know how to do everything, from how to shoot a torpedo to running an engine to whatever. People that served on these vessels is, uh, 
you bind very closely with them because it's very much a, a closed community. Not everybody can be a submarine sailor. The camaraderie is great. Uh, liberty is interesting depending on where you get to go. Uh, I got to go to the Mediterranean, you know, spent time in France and Portugal and Greece and Italy and islands of Malta and Palma de Mallorca, things like that. So you had a pretty good time. Uh, I'm proud of the duty we did in submarine service. Uh, obviously, I'm still attached to it after many years out of it, but uh, I don't think there's any better duty in the service. Uh, it's hard to get into it, and yeah, there's some scary times, but we did a good job doing what we were doing, and hopefully they're out there right now doing the same thing.